Hey, what's going on, people? This is Rollo C here along with... GT. That's right. This is the Stem Cell Podcast, and this is our entertainment section of the podcast. And we just wanted to bring uh, shed some light about, uh, I guess, the never-ending, forever beef of 50 Cent and Ja Rule. Two grown-ass men in their 40s. My God. Grow the fuck up. But I can honestly say... That it was not, which is majority of the time, not initiated by Ja Rule. Uh, 50 Cent, he finds himself to be one of the, uh, thinks he's one of the biggest bullies in the industry because of what he actually did to derail Ja Rule's uh, career. But luckily for Ja Rule, he's able to go on tour with Ashanti and he's still making his money. I feel like uh, rap battling is a part of the culture. However, I would never do anything to hurt another man's money. I'm just not going to do that because this world is too big and we can all get it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, what happened was, was that Ja Rule had a show in Syracuse, New York that was canceled. And he went ahead and put out a video on IG stating that, you know, he wanted to go ahead and uh, apologize to the people that the show was canceled, that he wanted to try to make it up to them and, you know, things of that nature, just being very politically correct about the situation. And then 50 Cent goes in clowning him and it goes mocking him, uh, Talking about, uh, you know, how how uh, 50, I'm sorry, not 50, but Ja Rule did a Uber commercial. You know, just being funny with it, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get his little dough. And uh, 50 was mocking him about it. He said, hey, look at my Uber. And he was showing a video of him going on a private jet. And then uh, not only that, he was also apologizing to his fans, all 10 fans that were actually going to go to the show. This is how 50 was actually trying to uh, mock Ja Rule. And it was just, it was something that I thought it was really, uh, you know, it was uncalled for. And then he puts out a tweet stating uh, that 10 tickets were sold and nobody wanted to go see that shit. Get the fuck out of here. Get the strap. And it's just funny as hell. He went from, you know, Constantly messing with um, with Ja Rule, then he was trolling Papoose, and now he's uh, evidently he's got an issue with Buth- with uh, <laughs> with Busta Rhymes. Damn, I'm trying to get this damn word out. Um, so my question is, you know, for the di- for the former diamond selling artist, you know, why he just why do you look so thirsty? To try to go, to garner attention, like, I mean, we know Fifty Cent's not relevant in, anymore in the hip hop world. He's got his little show power, you know. You know, you got your little show, you know, make your money, make you do your little show, but um, you know, leave the trolling, the mockery, and all that shit to them young kids, man. Because at the end of the day, like this dude's the same age as my older brother. He's forty three years old. Now, if I see my older brother acting a damn fool. Something like this right now, I'd be like, hey, bro, we need to talk real quick. Like, that shit ain't gonna fly. You need to be a grown man about your shit. You know? I don't care if you call it entertainment or that. Oh, that's how I make my money or, you know, it's like, dude, if you're a man of prestige and everything you touch is very pristine to the fullest, I'm gonna tell you just like this. You're gonna be fucking relevant no matter what. You don't even got to ask for no attention to do stuff negatively. You don't have to even be in that light. And evidently, 50 Cent thinks that he needs to be trolling people. He thinks that he needs to be, you know, going off the chain with absolutely everything in order to garner attention. And uh, it's just, it's sad because you're looking at a man who's over 40 who's trying to impress girls that he can evidently be their father, you know? And, like, my dude, like, like you're just too old for that shit, man. You know, Ja Rule's reaching out to his true fans, you know? And the thing is, is, like, at some point, you just need to let shit go. And Ja Rule ain't worried about him, you know? Although, you know, Ja Rule feels like he has to kind of Come back a little, dude. You ain't got you ain't got to say shit to him, bro. You just got to go ahead and keep it moving, man. At one at, at one way or another, grown ass people are gonna be like, you know what? That brother right there is taking the higher route. He's doing a lot better, 
you know, because 50 looks petty. He looks petty, he looks thirsty for attention, and it's all because he's not relevant anymore. Because he hasn't made a fucking, fucking hit album since Get Rich or Die Trying. And Get Rich or Die Trying was, thank goodness, it went, it went diamond because it absolutely deserved it. It was one of the most classic albums in hip-hop history. But, needless to say, it was the only classic album he ever put out. Only. 50 Cent's not a good rapper. He's not really good at entertainment. He's doing, he's trying to do his thing now in reference to acting. Like he's getting better. But that comes along with the territory of getting better. You start perfecting your craft, the more you're beating down on it. So enjoy the acting world. Do your thing. Stop trolling, folks. Don't fucking make another fucking damn song, period. That get the strap shit was fucking weak. That shit sucked. You got this hard ass beat. And this mother, yeah, 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 go get the strap. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Then he got this fucking rainbow hair color freak in the fucking shit, which he needs to stick to doing reggaeton songs because he got a song called uh, Bebe, which is a hot song. And mind you, this kid 6'9", he's Mexican and Puerto Rican, but he don't speak no Spanish. But he sound better rapping in Spanish than he does in English. And English is his first and only language. And he fucking sucks. He sounds like if Fredro from Onyx couldn't rap. That's who he sounds like. So anyway, what's your take on it? Well, I mean, I, I thought about this in the uh, last week segment. Um, so it's going to be any different from what I said before and pretty much, pretty much everything you pretty much said prior to me talking. Um, you know, it, it's like, it's almost like a, a man who has never grown up. You know what I'm saying? Or it's like a, a dirty, yeah, like a thirteen year old growing up. He just, you know, what I mean, it's like it's it's for him to get his relevancy. Um, I guess business moves is not easy for him to do these days. So I mean, movies, yeah, he is certain movies and stuff like that. But I mean, the movies that he's in are not really, they're not great. You know what I'm saying? They're not uh, record breaking movies and stuff like that. So. So being, if you want to get back to the old Ferrari F50 like it used to be, then, you know, he, the way that he used to do it, it was a lot easier. He didn't have to do the much clout chasing that he's doing now. Um, there's some people who want the that beam and that and that and that dollar more than others. Some people are just comfortable where they at in the cloud chasing deal like that like you know they'll they'll get it and they're chasing it but they're not chasing it as hard you know but he said he's known to do that because that's just the level of uh money and fame and fortune that that he wants to get and he found out these days it's hard to get there um and then in the end he's gonna make it's gonna make him look bad and I promise you, it won't. It's not gonna last. It's not gonna last too long because it's gonna get old. People gonna get tired of it. And it's like, how how far do you go with this before it's like, you know what, man? Like, you know, you just you become. This is almost like an entertainer, a, a, a celebrity, whatever. Like, at some point, it's gonna become irrelevant. Like, how far? How many? I mean, how many? How much longer do? You gonna do this before you just become irrelevant off of that. Now, once you become irrelevant off of cloud chasing, then what else do you have left? You know. So, if anything, he better try to keep on doing his best at this because right now I'm not gonna say he's the best at it, but he's just the most consistent. In it. And for him to, to get where he want to be, that's just, to me that's his only shot. Well, yeah, pretty much his mainly his his main shot. Movies, I don't know who's gonna carry more than him. You know, that's, that's pretty much all I got to say about, about him. It, it's just ridiculous, and I'm, I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, movies, he's definitely gotten a lot better. But, uh, 
I mean, like, the Get Rich or Die Trying movie, man, like, you could tell, like, it was just his first feature picture. Because, uh, I mean, <laughs> he absolutely sucked in that fucking movie. He sucked. He was like, he was, I remember he was going down the courtroom stairs because he had just got uh, obtained by police or whatnot. He was like, his grandfather was like, what's your, pro- what's your problem with you, Marcus? And he was like, I'm a gangster and I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to play that, man. I got to play that back, man. But it was funny, man. And I'm just like, dude. I'm like, you got to do a lot better. And he did. So he found a way to reinvent himself. And I can appreciate that because we all need to do that. You know, we shouldn't all be one trick ponies. But my thing is now he's starting to go back to what he used to do. And what you used to do was hot back in 2003. 2018, that, that shit ain't flying no more. You know what I'm saying? Like the era of gangster right. rap is older, uh, over. It's older and it's over, you know? And, pe- you know, society's not built like that no more, man. You know? They're just not. Well, well, well the, the thing is, man, let me tell you what. Like, it's like, it's, it's like, like, see, the real, the real gangsters and stuff out there is this still out there. But the public. And you know, into and you know, the entertainment world is trying to make it irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some because they figure some people are going to switch the trend over to whatever hot what's happening. You know, mm-hmm. but there's some people have heart and they're going to stick to who they are. So, you know, and this is this is a situation where you can't change everybody. So it, it's just to say, who's going to be the person to, hey, follow, stay in your lane, you know what I'm saying, driving your, your own path, or going to be people be like, hey, man, this block is doing this, man. I need to get on with the bandwagon, catch the wave, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what it comes Yeah, no doubt. But, you know, that's basically how I feel about that. So, uh, so John, keep doing your thing. Keep your head up. And I'll tell you like this. I, I like Fifty Cent more than I like Ja Rule, but I don't, I don't, I don't believe in just consistently just fucking with people. You know what I'm saying? You put a cat up a corner for, for so damn long, that motherfucker's gonna attack. You know what I'm saying? Well, you be like, oh shit, I didn't expect that. Right now, I'm a, I didn't say anything about Ja Rule, but I do want to say this: like, you know, I know he's trying to make himself relevant again by kind of you know coming out on certain topics, whatever, which is cool. But I respect that. At least he's not just trying to beef with or, or try to jump into every little thing they hear, like 50. You know what I'm saying? I got more respect for Ja Rule for him just, you know, even though it's stating his opinion and staying in his lane, where he's at. Yeah, man. He's like, trying to cause, yeah, he's still trying to cause, you know, um, pretty much unnecessary beef, you know? Yeah, there's no need for it, man. At the end of the day, like, you, you, you the grown man about the shit. Like, you know, um... KRS One even says it back to this day that he says if MC Shan would have never replied to my diss track, I wouldn't be who I am now. And nobody even knows who MC Shan is, but he's the guy that made KRS One, the founder of Boogie Down Productions, relevant. So I would have just kept that quiet, <laughs> you know. Like, he was coming at me like that, like, because remember, that blood in my eye, Ja Rule dedicated a whole album to 50 Cent. You ain't got to dedicate the whole album. Like, I love, that's one thing I loved about Jay-Z when he did the takeover. At the end of, at the, uh, end of the song, he was like, he's like, and the rest of y'all, he, what he said? He said, he said, he said, the rest of y'all get half a bar. Fuck y'all. I love that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it goes to show you, like, he dedicated a song to this Nas. But it was like, yeah, the rest of y'all, y'all get a half a bar. Fuck y'all. Like, it was just funny as hell. So, anyway, that's our take on the uh, situation between 50 and Ja Rule. Uh, next, we got some more news coming from a millennial rapper. I'm going to let my man go ahead and hit on that. 
And, uh, you know, I'm going to chime in, too, and get me a little rant, and you know that. So we'll be back. This is the Stem Cell Podcast.